Ladies and gentlemen, hello everybody, Strangers123 here today with yet another replay analysis. Today we've got, uh, well, replay cast, I guess. Today we've got KK1604 and Ahiryu from EU server on fault line. Double CV game, Ranger Hiryu versus Ranger Ranger, which pretty much means we've automatically won because Hiryu is better than Ranger. Colorado against Gneisen now, both teams getting a Gneisen now, they get the Sean Horse instead of our Colorado. Bayern versus Bayern, Kyrnish, Congo, New York, Congo, Atlanta versus Miyoko, Nuremberg, Nuremberg, Cleveland, all Kyrnishburg, they get the DR5 Cruiser. And, uh, well, both teams get destroyers, we get two tier 5 minicasters, they get an Ogna Vine, a Kamikaze R, which can be a bit of a disadvantage, especially considering this map. Having a look at our setup, we are 2 2 2 without premium consumables, going forwards on the uh, map right now, and let's have a look at where our orders are being placed. We're placing some orders, basically, well, it might seem that all of them are placed at a position in front of our ship as we make a slight turn. There they are. Now, in chat, you can see KK1604 has asked the Ranger if he wants to strike out one enemy CV, and that is certainly usually a good thing in a 2 CV game to kill off an enemy CV. However, that might sometimes make it a bit too easy for you, and it almost certainly takes away your ability to gain a clear sky. Now, our Ranger has launched a torpedo bomber and a fighter, which means he is 1 1 1. Which means he has a fighter utility and strike utility. Now, the thing about this map is, it can often be quite difficult to sneak a strike through. If you go, now that he's in the map view, let's have a look. If you go down the western border, or the eastern border, the enemy fleet tends to spread towards them, especially on sea, where people cross here, or where it's uh, the distance between th this map edge border and uh, this is a lot smaller, which reduces the possibility of get or the probability of getting a strike through. Whereas if you try to sneak down the A side border, there is a bit more space. However, it's the most obvious move for you as a character to make. So this map really, in my opinion, doesn't fit too well with a stealth snipe. However, it's a reasonably small map, and uh, another thing I didn't actually mention was the middle area. Because of the fleet spawning distributed, you can't really just safely fly over. <clears throat> now, as you can see, however, in the chat, the friendly ranger says he is stock, and he's saying that he also is interested in trying to snipe the CV. Now, friendly dive bombers, as you can see, are still next to our own carriers, so they need, you know, if you want an effective snipe, they should be moved. Now let's actually uh, get the mouse cursor away. Now by now our strike wings are around the middle would definitely be spotted. And with US strike wings being, you know, with worse concealment, they're probably also spotted. Anyway, we realized the mistake with the tie bombers uh, doing around nothing. We move them up and we see here a potential gap through the middle. Uh, their Cleveland is actually on the west and there we go. We see one of the enemy rangers. Now, at this point, we, we actually see both. One's 44, both of them are fully upgraded, 44,900 health. This is just something useful to see. And as the ranger's inferior concealment has caused enemy fighters to head to the western side of the map, we might be getting a free pass. Not to mention, we also have the AS captain skill. Now, the ranger we seem to be attacking is a fighter ranger. And uh, here we go, we see attaching both fighters to the friendly torpedo bombers, in my opinion, is a very poor thing to do. It means that an opponent with fighters can just head on strafe and murder absolutely everything. However, some of our torpedo bombers get shot down, one per squadron, and the ranger slows a bit down, so I'm not... No, he doesn't slow down, so he does actually end up eating all six of those. Engine down, flooding caused 4,000 health left. Had uh, one of our bombers not been shot down, we could have had the, the uh, torpedo bomber Alpha to kill him. However, at this point, we only need one dive bomber squadron to be able to kill this ranger off. And that's really it. We and we do. One fire, three bomb hits. Realistically, that's all we needed. Now, on the way home, we're a little bit careless, so uh, we're... Let me just, uh... Take this away. We see that the enemy by in here, we're flying reasonably close to him. If this had been, for example, a Cleveland or something, this could have been a major problem. However, the friendly rangers, his squadrons, just got decimated on the west. And that's all the distraction that KK needed to get the strike that he had going down the middle perfectly through. Now at this point, I honestly wouldn't be locking those fighters. This is the dead rangers fighter squadron, so simply all they had to do was fly it behind, get up, strafe it. At this point, we're just also attacking. Sure, we get the panic attack against the enemy's ranger, and I would also be moving this ship towards the west. Sure, we get this panic attack and, you know, we're probably going to beat it with 
minimal losses. However, the strafing would have saved ourselves ammo, it would have completely reduced the possibility of losses, and and it seems we're actually not winning clear, as clearly as I had uh, anticipated, but it would have completely negated the possibility of losses. And a single full HP fighter squad, which our original fighter attacking it was, could have just completely annihilated both the squadrons, the second one coming in as well, for basically no cost. While we still would have had the planes to deal with the enemy remaining ranger, which is conveniently for us a strike ranger. Now, while I do not exactly condone or you know I don't support or I'm, but I'm neither against the the move to snipe a carrier, the enemy ranger that was fighter set up did kind of see it coming. Now, uh, anyways, Piotraso, uh, enemy Miyoko, he seems to be heading towards the island. Whether it's to protect the other carrier or not, it doesn't matter at this point because sniping the enemy carrier at this point would be a waste of time. He's a strike ranger, we don't need to make this attack, as the enemy Cleveland gets blasted for a good chunk of health. But the important thing to keep in mind though is, at this point we know that both enemy fi uh, carriers are fighter, no, well, had two fighters combined. We had three fighters combined. So we as a team hold fighter plus one. And overall, fighter rangers, they are not that strong. As long as you avoid those fighters, now, uh, I don't think I mentioned this, but this is the patch zero, uh, zero point, whatever. It's, it's point eleven. It's it's. Uh, I was actually doing the EU CV event that uh, we had over here, but uh, it basically you know means that the U.S. fighters' ammunition has been buffed by this point. So while not a bad thing, I still feel that uh, just trying to outplay a ranger's. Uh, Fighters is usually the better idea, especially in this situation where both of our minicons have now been knocked out. At least we have, you know, two battleships in B and their Charlie forces faffing around doing nothing. Anyways, uh, we're heading towards the eastern side of the map. The friendly ranger really isn't. Unfortunately, I'm not so sure this was uh, the best drop possible. We still have, you know, dive bombers sitting around and our fighters are only now beginning to take off. So, unfortunately, I think we're only going to get four torpedo bomber hits. No flooding caused on this one, which is a bit sad. However, if the ranger goes in and dive bombs him, sets him on fire. Which he did. And he's going in with the torpedo bombs as well. That, that looks like a automatic uh, drop. But it's not too bad of an automatic drop, since the rain, uh, our strike wings seem to have knocked out the enemy's engine. So if that guy now receives flooding, he's going to damage control part, and the fact that he is down to just under 6,000 health, using a heal to counter it, almost certainly means that he would have been forced to trigger that damage control party no matter what, otherwise we would have simply waited here and killed him off regardless. So he's definitely used damage control party, his ship is accelerating now, he's getting shot at, and he's using heal to counter. Now sending two dive bomber squadron in here, like this, can be a little bit of a, a bad thing, as you can see. Our dive bomber manages to get locked. I would have simply sent both of them in. Now our second one needs to make a circle around. However, realistically, we just need to get you know two fires on him, and he's definitely dead. One fire would probably have killed him. However, with our fighters showing up on the party late, unfortunately, we lose the ability to make the first drop, which loses us the ability to make a reliable dot stack on the second one, or you know initiate the dot stack on the second guy. However, we get a kill on the first guy, and now our fighters are sitting it under anti-aircraft while we're looking at it, personally. Uh, it looked like we were, I don't know, maybe, maybe we're making some autopilot for the ship, but I would definitely start pulling those fighters away. Despite the fact that the enemy has no more fighters left, losing friendly fighters here is really just giving the enemy free experience that they don't need. And losing fighters like this also does mean that uh, you, well, how do I say it, need to cycle those planes as they start taking excessive losses, you know, instead of just having to cycle them when they run out of ammo. So, on that note, I would have simply had one fighter up here and just left the other fighter squadron to protect the northern force, because that's the enemy's pushing force. Uh, the, that's the force that's pushing the enemy, more better said. Chances are, that's the force that the enemy's carrier, remaining one, is going to focus on. Especially considering that's the force he's been focusing on earlier. Now, with hilariously poor-looking uh, automatic drops that our ranger is doing, I wouldn't count on anything for him other than maybe getting some lucky damage over time initiations for us, but again, it's not something I would really count on for, for worth much. Now at this point, I definitely would have, well, you know, alright, you know, we're, we're chatting, but I would have landed those fighters after the uh, dive bombers are in the air, because our torpedo bombers are never going to get back anytime soon, so we don't need them. 
Now, uh, while this isn't exactly a terrible drop, I think it could have been done a lot more patiently to uh, get us more than three dive bomber hit, uh, torpedo bomber hits even. I can't even English today. However, we get realistically what we want, the flooding. And with the delay, the takeoff of our dive bombers, uh, we could potentially actually be losing out a good chunk of damage here. Now, in my opinion, against something like the uh, Gneisna, which by all means has strong anti-aircraft, is it? Yes, it is the Gneisna, which it, it does have strong anti-aircraft. I mean, you can see it did take down some of our planes, and it wiped pretty much most of the range of torpedo bombers. However, with five dive bombers, we can kind of send one in for the initiation, you know, along with the Rangers dive bombers if we'd uh, been ready at that point, and simply get the fire and keep a second squadron to go in with the torpedo bombers out of his damage control party. Now, at this point, I really honestly don't feel it's too worth to send two squadrons of dive bombers on this nice now. Simply one to ensure the kill is fine because we have two battleships which are engaging him. And one of which are, is currently engaging with secondaries as well. And you know, here we can see the uh, dive bombers are taking some quite significant losses. Now the second squadron here is a complete waste. That fire is going to kill him. And keeping both the fighters on escort duty is just, in my opinion, very poor play at this point. Because we know that the enemy's remaining ranger is in strike setup. And we already shot down this nice enough fighter. And chances are he won't have another one available to launch yet. And even if it did, we simply need one empty dive bomber to bait it, or the fighter squadron to kill it. Anyways, our rear guard situation seems to be much more under control, with an enemy destroyer having a look at it. It's the Agnavai, so he's not going to have the ability to concealment torp any of our friendly battleships. So with this situation under good control, we can simply just go off and deal with the northern flank. And also... Once the battleships are down, the friendly battleships are going to have a much easier time. However, one of our uh, Congos gets burned down by the Agnavai. Now, ship-wise, we are definitely far behind, and they have a destroyer on the loose. So personally, I would leave a plane, one of these fighters, which are just on escort duty doing nothing, to keep the Agnavai spotted, spot his torpedoes, or even better, send in a torpedo bomber squadron, or preferably both, since Agnavais at this tier are still a little bit difficult to hit. Send them both, kill the Ognavai, which gives peace of mind to our battleships, and removes their ability to smoke, or contest the map. And then after that, start working individually on picking off isolated enemy battleships. And that Kernish over there is so low HP, personally I would have just sent a dive bomber squadron afterwards. But to be completely honest, seeing that, you know, now, there is, you know, first of all, there is this potential for double strike, if this New York doesn't uh, get any more health back, and we manage to hit it properly, which unfortunately we don't, because the things are pretty small. So personally, I would have just simply said, both the Peter Bombers kill New York, two Dive Bomber Squadrons kill Kernish. And that would basically grant us the double strike. So at this point in time, this Peter Bomber Squadron, in my opinion, is a bit of a waste. We simply just need to hit them. Now, of course, the argument of, hey, he can heal, always exists. However, if he heals, two Dive Bomber Squadrons is still sufficient to kill him. Anyways, here we are, New York, one dive bomber squadron, we just basically need to set it on fire to kill it. And we can see we are spotted by aircraft, the enemy's torpedo bombers and dive bombers are moving on as we secure our Kraken Unleashed. So definitely, those fighters circling our own ship, useless, not defending the team at this point. However, we are in a major points advantage, so that's not too big of a problem. However, this game could still go either way, especially considering the fact that we were spotted by aircraft if the enemy start to push us now. This could be very bad for us, as we are low on torpedo bomber, well actually we're technically out of torpedo bomber replacements. And I would be here, waiting for a proper attack on the Bayern, since this torpedo, this dive bomber, if we have a look at just the 7th squad, there we go, we can see it's being panicked. Oh, not anymore. And something we didn't really notice there. However, we do manage to pick up two bomb hits for a good chunk of damage and a fire, so... If he does damage control party and we get our torpedo bombers up to attack him from the southern side, this is the, uh, the Miyoko's float plane, to keep in mind here. If we attack from the southern side, we can attack without the Miyoko being able to trigger defensive anti-aircraft. And something I would do at this point is simply select our torpedo bombers and hold down the alt button. This is important because if the enemy Miyoko triggers defensive anti-aircraft, as we can see our torpedo bombers are now taking damage. 
and I would also be trying to split them to attack from two different angles. That is, I'm going to pause the replay here and take control of the camera. Four squadron here, five squadron here, or one squadron here, one squadron there. Anti-aircraft focus on this with one of the fighters. They are, they still have sufficient ammo to lock this torpedo bomber, uh, this lockdown plane, the uh, float plane fighter, simply to keep it out of the way. One squadron from this side, one squadron from this side, figure out which squadron you need. You do not need both. And simply drop them with only one, the one that he's turning away from and that has a good drop angle. Of course, now I'm just nitpicking and making things specific. However, that would save us one last squadron for attacking this Bion and the dive bomber, which is soon getting ready to take off, to also hit this enemy Bion. With the situation on our fleet, our friendly Bion is low HP, this guy is on max, and this guy is so far away, he's in you know, Colorado, he's basically useless. This situation can still be problematic, especially since this Miyoko is coming around, and if this Miyoko triggers defensive AA at a smart time, his defensive AA will cover him to the point where he basically gets around to attack us, and that could be very, very nasty. So here's hoping Miyoko doesn't pay attention. He seems to be reacting somehow, however, as he is trying to turn in reaction to the torpedo bombers. However, maintaining turn there would just cause him to... Uh, smash into the island, and at this point we're using both of our torpedo bomber groups, which is overkill and unnecessary in my opinion, if we uh, simply spread out and got a good attack on him. However, in this case it did seem that it was uh, necessary with the current drop angle to hit him like that. However, we do get the kill, and that's realistically the most important part here, and the Bion has lost a good chunk of health as well. Now with six kills from this game. We've already gotten our Kraken unleashed. There is, however, a seventh on the line here, the Bion. And at this point, I would be trying to get those torpedo bombers to land and launch one of our fighter squadrons to kill this enemy float plane fighter, which really shouldn't be too major of a problem. But most importantly, to prevent the Rangers' next upcoming attack, since we are spotted by this plane over here. And you can see the Rangers' fighter coming in at this point, and let me select the plane. If the, if the enemy's uh, float plane fighter had come for our foremost dive bomber, which it's unlikely to do due to the fact that the enemy ship is already dead, it could have been a bit of a, a nuisance. However, we've sailed around the corner now, in line of sight of this Bion, which is a ship control mistake, and the 7 squadron, 5 dive bomber hits, they're completely unnecessary, the target already being on fire. This uh, is basically damage costed, or potential damage costed, since we could potentially have sent that along with a torpedo bomber squadron to attack the enemy rangers. Speaking of which, he is now coming to attack us. Selecting all of our squadrons, we can see that one of the fighter squadrons is attack is ordered to attack the torpedo bomber squadron coming in first. And we're now sending in a torpedo bomber squadron, which could potentially be superfluous and just unnecessary due to the fact that we have friendly battleship shells coming in. He's already on fire. And it is in fact the fire that kills them, so that torpedo bomber squadron could potentially cost us some damage on the ranger. Now at this point I would definitely be making full use of strafing against the dive bombers coming in. Perhaps not on the current squadron we're attacking because the friendly ranger squadrons are on top of them. And another thing of personal note is I do not really suggest you use auto attacks like this, but uh, second of all, I don't actually suggest you fly around in uh, minimap mode because it kind of takes away accurate ability to make orders and time to attack the next squadron. And the reason for that is quite simple. It takes away, in my opinion, any accuracy of uh, orders you can place when you just simply use your mouse cursor and place the orders here. Anyways, uh, in my opinion, a mistake da uh, mistaken damage control party used there. If he sets us on fire, which he thankfully doesn't, this could have been, well, us unable to launch strike wings. So, let's see. We have a ranger to hunt down. Our fighters are low on ammunition, however, it, there is no point in trying to land them right now because we've shut down the enemy ranger's strike planes, and within the remaining time of the game, I doubt he will be able to field an effective strike against us. So now the priority should be getting our last remaining strike wings in the air, which uh, the launching cycle does permit us to. And, well, now it's simply a matter of chasing down the Ranger. Now, we have a Torpedo Bomber and a Dive Bomber Squadron up in the air first, with a little bit of uh, drips and drabs coming up behind, a Dive Bomber after that, and a Torpedo Bomber. For us, really, to be able to kill this Ranger, we do have the time in the Battle Timer, however, we may not have the points. So chances are, 
we're just going to have to go in with whatever we have available fast and hope that the ranger isn't paying attention and that he can eat a lot of torpedoes. Now the friendly ranger helps us out with air defense here. If we had been strafing, we would have had ammunition to completely wipe this last torpedo bomber squadron as well. Anyways, let's have a look at all of our squadrons and their orders coming in. That is a underled drop. It's only probably going to be hitting two torpedoes. I'm not even sure the third one will hit. Yes, the third one did in fact miss. The ranger goes in for the dive bomber. We did cause a flooding. The ranger did, well, appear to have damage control partied it. Two dive bomber squadrons going in, getting the fires. Friendly ranger, however, getting two hits in there with the torpedo bombers. Finishing it off, in my opinion, I would have waited since the enemy ranger did in fact react to the friendly ranger's torpedo bomber drop. So simply, if we had waited, the alpha damage from the, those two torpedoes would have been unlikely to finish off the enemy ranger, and we could potentially have picked up 8 kills. Having a look at the post battle result screens, 185,849 damage separated over 21 target hits with torpedoes, 29 dive bomber hits, and 11 fire sets. We didn't really go for any flooding damage over time, and in my opinion, 24 planes shot down is somewhat weak for a game where we were basically fighting against a strike ranger. The utilization of strafing should easily have knocked us at least up to 35 planes, considering the attack against us in the later stages of the game, and had we had fighters a bit more vigilante and separated around the map to prevent the enemy's rangers from dropping, since we only really need, well, we only realistically need one fighter squadron to shoot down enemy floor plane fighters, if even that, careful and skillful management of dive bombers to figure out which one is locked, the first one usually, and use the second dive bomber squadron to drop, and then the empty dive bomber squadrons can simply fly back in and, and attract the aggro of the float plane fighters, which means we can strike since the enemy has no fighters, we can strike without actually escorting our strike wings. Speaking of which, escorting strike wings through the automatic escort function is, in my opinion, a very, very bad thing to do. Especially against US carriers as an IJN, since they can simply head on strafe your planes for a gazillion damage, usually taking down two, maybe three. If you're exceptionally unlucky, they can even take down four planes per squadron in a head on. And that's basically your entire wing wiped. If anything is fortunate enough to survive, any drop from that will be from this point well, basically completely ineffective, or any plane here that survives will just simply get taken down by anti-air. Which means that if you try to drop, you lose the planes, you're not doing any damage, and you basically have to return to resupply them, and replenish the squadrons. And losing, basically, even if you say a good case scenario for you, two planes per squadron, so that's four squadrons, so eight total aircraft, is still, you know, eight out of 72 of your total planes. And that's not something you want to be doing. Continuing on, 7 kills, unfortunately not able to find our 8th on the enemy ranger, 2,307 experience on the team list, the Colorado, which was on the southern end of the map, defending from the enemy the western push, 2nd on the team with the Bayern coming in 3rd, the remaining ranger 1-1-1, one, 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 claiming he was stock 16 planes shot down, again I think he could have done it slightly better as well, especially through the utilization of strafing, the ranger, well, US carriers nowadays basically get 3 strafings per ammunition set for their fighters, the other guys now on the team, who unfortunately went down, picks up 13 planes, the Bayern, third on team, 9 planes, with Egyptian drafts all over the place. Enemy guys now, 27 planes, Bayern managing to pick up 13, Scharnhorst 12. The Fighter Ranger, I think that is, it picks up 19, actually no, 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 yeah, yes, I think it was, because he did murder the initial Ranger's strike, took down some of our planes as well. And the other guy, the Strike Ranger on 5 planes, probably not... Well, it doesn't really seem like he's done too much, but it's still a surprisingly low experience for him to get if, in fact, the enemy's bottom ranger is the strike ranger. But considering that, uh, two, well, at least the torpedo and dive bombers of the other ranger, the uh, friendly one, that is, that attacked the enemy rangers in the beginning of the map to serve as the distraction to allow us to snipe, he definitely would have picked up at least 12 planes since he killed off everything. But regardless of that, having a look at the detailed report, um, actually no, let's let's hop back here, since we see that one of the rangers, the guy we sank, killed 5 planes off, 44,900 damage, that's a full HP ranger, that was John Bart, so in fact, yes, their fighter ranger is the one that got the 19 planes shot down, and their strike ranger basically did nothing. We managed to do 31,000, almost 32,000 against the enemy Scharnhorst, 32,000 against the Bayern, 18 against the uh, Gneisenau, 16 against the Miokov, finishing him off. 
Continuing on, New York, 13,914. Not really that critical. Chernish, 2,000 to finish him off as well, in my opinion. Not the most critical kills. And I think also, if you really wanted to be nitpicking here, you could easily have farmed a double strike off them if you had waited a minute to get our dive bombers up to initiate the damage over time stack against the New York, if needed, or just simply having two torpedo bomber alpha to guarantee the kill on the New York, and two dive bombers are more than enough to take down the 2,000 health that the Kernish have. And if the Kernish started healing, simply dive bombing it for a fire, hoping he damage control parties it, and then dive bombing him again with another fire, should be able to take him down with a little bit of time, also the New York. The remaining ranger, we failed to secure the kill against them, and in my opinion, only managing to pick up 17 planes shot down from his strike is uh, definitely something that could have been improved. Regardless, credits and experience, not the world's most important things. 221,000 experience without premium, uh, credits without premium is definitely not bad, and this, in my opinion, is why carriers are pretty good to make money with if you have a decent carrier that you enjoy playing, for example, Hiryu or Shokaku. I believe these are two very strong carriers and fun to and enjoyable to play as well. And if you feel confident in being able to push out some decent damage with them, get some decent amounts of kills with them, or just simply pick off destroyers. However, damage is mostly the biggest, uh, I guess, credit giver if you want. So just taking take, well, taking an aircraft carrier and farming damage with it is usually a good thing to do if you want some free credits because you don't really pay too much in repairs. And in my opinion, aircraft supply and ammunition supply is pretty ne ne negligible. And you can kind of get away with not using premium consumables, although I still recommend you keep them. But then and again, I have almost 200 million credits, and that's after having bought and sold probably six or seven Gautos. And then really fully kitting them out, not to mention live testing, which also requires you to buy, you know, upgrades for them. Of course, that is an investment you pretty much get in return again, because you get the modules back, but hey, whatever. I got too many credits, so I don't really care if I quote unquote waste credits on premium consumables that don't actually get consumed or used during the battle. Anyways, to recap this game, the first and most foremost thing I see is that our fighter play was definitely in pretty dire need of improvement. Not uh, realizing that the enemy fighters from the destroyed fighter ranger were chasing our planes, simply all we needed to do was head behind them and strafe them. As those fighters were set on a final order to attack whichever bomber that he had selected, it appeared to be the torpedo bombers on the return vector home, which would have saved ourselves from fighter losses, ammunition, and gotten ourselves, I believe, nine fighter planes killed from him instead of the five that we managed to pick up. And from there on, resupplying the fighters and keeping our, our eyes on the user interface in the bottom to see which planes are landing, which planes have landed, and which planes are sitting there waiting to take off. And the third thing is, in my opinion, your opinions obviously may vary, if you're used to flying around with the large map mode open, then by all means do so. However, I feel that it hampers your ability to micro, and at the end of the day, this isn't so much about your macro, because that can also be done by simply clicking on the minimap, which also saves you time from having to do it by pressing M and waiting for the user interface to actually show your map properly, which in my opinion simply takes way too long time. Now back to the fighter play, latching your fighters onto friendly strike wings is weak because of the aforementioned reasons of simply getting them all strafed away. Even a head-on strafe if the enemy loses 6 of his fighters, or in this case, since it's a fighter ranger, it's 6 out of 36 aircraft if he has the upgraded hull, which he did. That is definitely worth shooting down, even if we go by the worst case scenario of a reasonably poorly placed head-on of 2 planes per squadron. He shoots down 4 out of 24 of your fighters, which basically means it's an equal trade, and this is assuming he loses all 6 of his fighters, which chances are he will not if he head on strafes you so strongly, even though you have the air supremacy skill and he doesn't. You lose 4 of your torpedo bombers, which is definitely not worth it, because first of all, your planes are not that fast, in fact. I think 121 knots compared to Shokaku's almost 150. So your planes are slower. They are weak to anti-aircraft, considering the exact same plane is equipped on the tier 5 carrier Duiho, which means that the next strike, if you do get strafed away like that, is basically ineffective. Anyways, I've mumbled about to this um, fighter usage for way too long. That's pretty much it for the summary. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you can pick something out of it, and look forward to seeing more replays from everybody. If you want to submit replays, do not forget, I will leave all the details in the description. 
There is an EU forum thread and there is also a video, both of which are can be found in the description. That links you to the detailed instructions. If you can't really give a damn for that, just simply send a replay with descriptions and preferably post battle results screens to replays.strainers123 at gmail.com and I will have a look at it if time permits. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.